Well, hello, folks. I'm out here at Blade Show W, Blade Show William, and uh, we're here to interview William and see what he has to say about knives and stuff. So, you don't mind if I call you William, do you? Well, that's that's my name, so yeah, no problem. Right, so you've got some photos here for us. Can you tell us about them? Well, um, I had a horse when I was a kid. I rode him a lot. Rode him to the ground. Rode him till his um, hooves came off, basically. Yeah, that was rough on my horse. Um, so, later on I cut his head off and just rode him with no legs. I mean, I, I like I said, I rode him to the ground. Uh, I was captured by this guy. Held me for the police. I don't know who he is, but later on I found out he was my father. Here I am with uh, pistols on my side, living that gangster life. There's my parole officer, I mean father. And uh, luxurious furniture. Oh, the horse is still alive in this picture. Uh, tricycle. Probably mine. Yeah, that's my corral. I think this was uh, El Paso. Here I am, getting ready to dazzle the dames. Getting ready to go out in the Packard over here. Got the keys in my pocket. Got a, uh, uh, a pillow for, uh, so I can see over the steering wheel. Here's me with my Easter basket. I'm about to strangle this bunny here. And, uh, yeah, that's a couch. This thing's called a light. Yeah. There's some more, uh, there's another basket over there they never told me about. Here's another ginger. Back then they called me Billy. I don't know why. My name's William. But it confused me for the longest time. But uh, Ginger was a nice horse. That's why I'm smiling. Over here we're eating Ginger. No, we're not eating Ginger. Uh, this is a cake I celebrated for being in a gangster motorcycle club or something. Anyways... Your trophy was you got some cake at the end. I was happy about that. Um, my little sister. It's me with my motorcycle jacket still. All right, later on in life, I still have a motorcycle. Sorry about that. The memory ran out. Story of my life. Where were we? You had gotten past the boring part, and we're starting to get into the part where you were... Um, Adult. Oh, yes. Well, this is a picture from my backyard in New Mexico. I mean, that's the Sandia Mountains there. And my house was on a terrace. I had a pretty big backyard. So that all you saw was the rooftops of other houses. You didn't look into their backyard or see a wall. It was pretty cool. That was, like, one of the best ones. Here's me trying to look gangster, and a dog comes up and spoils it. So this is a Detonix 45. A Ruger Mini-14 and a Remington 870 shotgun with extended tube. There's like holsters and stuff up there. More guns. This is me in Louisiana. I have a the very first 45 I ever bought. A Colt 45. I wish I would have kept that one. And a Marlin 3030 lever action with Wet gear and camo. Um, later on, my camo turned red <laughs> to match my bike. This was in New Mexico. That was my house. And I was do, uh, doing a motorcycle camping trip where I packed all this stuff up and drove way off up and somewhere. Had saddlebags and everything. Went camping. There's some more of those heavies. See, we had to pull a lot of them. When I worked on B-52s, I said, how do you get out of Strategic Air Command? And they said, well, once SAC gets a hold of you, you don't get out. You know, unless you volunteer to go somewhere that nobody, you know, likes to go and stuff. And uh, that's how I went to Korea and went to um, fighter jets. Because then the equipment's a lot lighter and stuff. That's another one. That's the back of my mom's head. First wife. So, yeah, there. That was... Um, 
that was the stuff that I did there. And as far as, like, why do I like Warncliffs? I knew you were going to ask that question next. Funny thing is, at first, I didn't like Warncliffs. I had never seen one before, and when I um, first saw one, I, I mistook it for a sh uh, sheep's foot. Oh, that was sheep's foot. There. This is more of a sheep's foot. Nope, 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 nope. It's around here somewhere. Got a lot of knives around here. There we go. Here's a sheep's foot blade. At first, I didn't think I liked these kind of knives because it reminded me of safety scissors. You know, like, ooh, give them something where you won't hurt themselves, forgetting that this edge is sharp, you know? I mean, if you want to hurt yourself, having a blunt edge up here. Now I know why they have it. It's for, like, on a ship. If the ship lurches, you know, you won't impale somebody and everything. But, still, at first I didn't like those. Now I love them. And it's the same thing with warning clips. I didn't even know what a warning clip was. I thought it was, like I said, a sheep's foot. And uh, what I like about a Warncliffe is the aerodynamic shape of it. Plus, it's really, like, pointy, and you can cut stuff. It's just a really great knife to have all around. And if and if that bothers you, in this configuration as a Warncliffe trapper, you still have the slicing ability, this little spade blade, if that is what you need you know you're missing in a drop point but to me this is like the gec 47 of the poor man <laughs> or poor woman because or poor gender neutral because i can't afford a gec i can't you know go through all the hoops of what getting on a waiting list and mailing list and getting up there and having your money already i'm saving it aside and you know that's fine if you want to do that, but I can't do all that. But anyways, this is about the same size as one of those, the Viper, and it looks pretty good. And 440A, I think this is in, is this in D2? Yeah, it might be, it's 440A. But if they made this in carbon steel, it'd be even happier. But yeah, you know, that's, you, you have to get by with what you got to get by with, is what I have learned. You know, you can't always um, get what you want, but if you try something. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, my Carta is another thing that I like in, in handles. And uh, I don't know. See, when I was back in the, in the time when and Pete and a lot of those other people were collecting knives and stuff like that i was collecting guns that's where a lot of my money went into was uh, handguns and rifles and i worked on a rifle and pistol range so uh i wasn't making a whole lot of money oh. <gasps> uh, look how small I now this is in this is a junior high and high school and i was trying out for the football team these are regular size kids for their age you know and and I didn't, you know, like, accelerate because I'm so brainy or anything. I was in the right grade for my age. So, yeah, that didn't last long. But I can say that I actually tried football at one time. Um, this is me in high school. You see, the smile is gone. They had a hair code. We couldn't have our hair long. And this was in the hippie times, you know, in the 70s. Everybody had long hair. It was nothing about it. So I was a rebel starting off. And then what did I do? As soon as I got out of joining the military, and I shaved my head. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is an Oldsmobile Vista Cruiser that I put headers on. And that thing would haul ass. And it had this electric window that rolled back down with the switch up there. That was, that was the shiznicks back in the time, in the day. Uh, I think this was Carswell. Uh, Air Force Base, I'm not sure. No, that was Louisiana. This describes me. This is like one of a... one. Of, if you've ever seen like Thousand Yard Stare, that's that's what it is when you've just seen too much, you know. I don't know what it was going on at the time, but it was freaking me out. And this is how it came about. <laughs> Mom and Dad were getting frisky out in the yard. Yeah, Dad was in the Navy at first. 
That's him in a Navy uniform. And that's Mom. Way back when. That would be before I was born. Because I was born in England. Um, I had dual, I still do have dual citizenship. A, a British birth certificate. And even a national health, um, thing, number, I guess, you know. Everybody, when they're over there, they get free medical when you're born. But not if you leave, if your parents leave. And anyways. Yeah, so, I was born of American parents. Both of them were American. And dad was stationed overseas because he was in the service, in the Air Force. So, if... If things would have been different, I would have been born in Germany. I would have had German citizenship because that's where he was right before. I think I was conceived in Germany <laughs> and born in England, but I don't know. That's something you never find out unless you start asking your parents specifically. And it's kind of weird, you know, like when I was living with being mom's caretaker in her 80s. I couldn't be asking her, hey, you know, when do you think you guys had sex? When do you think I was originally conceived? Where was it at? And, I would have, like, had a heart attack right there and I had to form CPR. So, that never popped up. And my parents were really, like, prudish about sex and stuff, you know. If anything was even, like, rated R, I wasn't supposed to allow to be see it, you know, on TV or anything. And now, kids, what they see on the internet before the age of six, man. Anyway... It's an old guy talking, isn't it? That's that old sound. Dinosaur. He's a dinosaur. Yeah, but um, anyway. I like knives. I always have. And recently I've been getting into getting more of them. And why I like Rough Riders is because they're inexpensive. They're not the best knife in the world and everything. But if you are on a budget or you just want to scratch that itch, you can get a knife sometimes for less than ten dollars, you know, um, and and it not be cheap, you know. Like this, some people say, oh, they're cheap knives and everything. Uh, yeah, I wish they would upgrade their steel to like. I'd be happy if they went from 440A to 440C, but I'm happy with 440A because when I cut with these things, I carry them around, and if I'm out during the day nowadays. Maybe one or two cuts got in an envelope or something or a box. It does not get dull, you know? Why would I need a super steel? I mean, I like super steels. I like D2 and all those other ones just for the convenience, you know, and the hardness and everything. But it's not necessary, especially in a traditional, I don't think. Because when they go up, when they increase the steel, instead of saying, well, now 440C is so readily available and so expensive, we're just going to swap it over and not charge you much. The only company that I saw any do anything like that was Marbles when they went to D2 and Micarta. They still kept the traditional look, but they went to D2 and Micarta, and the price didn't jump up $10, $20 a knife like it would normally do. They could just say, ah, D2, we had to. Or micarta, ooh, it's a different material, and we're not used to working with it. It's just going to be more expensive, and there's no one other one like this, and blah, 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 you know, all those excuses. But no, they let it drop, you know, a whole line of them, and D2, and micarta. And that is really nice. That's like when a knife company is thinking about its customers, you know. Anyway, I've bored you long enough, and I've got to visit some people in another booth over there later on. So, if I can later on, I'll get into another um, Blade Show W episode. But for right now, I'm going to go over and party with this cool cat I've seen over here. And uh, we're going to talk about knives. What else? <laughs> Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.